Okay, here we go. Day eight warm up. This is uh, one more chance to get good at using graphing calculators. So you should try it. Pause the video. Try the try these three questions, and then unpause it. Check your answers, and we'll go over them. So go ahead and pause it and try the problems. Now I'm assuming you've tried these. These are the answers. Uh, two different answers for number two. You can write the equation of tangent line in slope intercept or point slope. We're going to often go with point slope because it's what we're going to get, and AP is fine with it for response questions. So there you go. So we're going to go ahead and go over these problems. <clears throat> So um, find the point intersection A. So let's go ahead and put these equations into our calculator, 8x cubed, which is a cubic. By the way, a cubics, it's going to kind of look like that if you were to keep going. And the next one's a sine curve. Sine curves go like that, right? They keep going. It's just good to know your functions. Now you better be in radian mode, otherwise you're going to it's going to look a lot different. Okay, so there we go. Um, we could make our window. Now we already have like a rough idea of what the window is. Maybe ish. I mean, the period of sine is usually two pi. But then if there's a number inside multiplying the x, you divide that by it. And then so the period is two. So I'm pretty sure this is at one. And this looks like it's at zero. And then the amplitude of sine is one. So you should know that the height of that's like one. So we have, I mean, if you just kind of use some basic knowledge about these functions, you could, you know, I think if we said negative 0.5 to one in the x direction, you know, maybe negative 0.5 to 1.5 in the y direction. So there's the cubic. And there's the sine curve, okay? Um, and so we're going to find this intersection right here. So second calc, number five intersect, first curve, second curve, guess around 0.5, or move the cursor, and it is actually exactly 0.5 comma 1 according to this. Now if we had asked to find it and gave a different guess, it might be a little different. Um, so like uh, if we let's try it again just to see if it gives us something different. If I said um, first curve, second curve, point four takes a little one, yeah, it's the same answer. So anyways, this other one should be zero zero. We could double check it. Intersect first curve, second curve, and check like point one. Now your guess will find the closest intersection. So yep, zero zero. Just to confirm. Okay, so. Um, Anyways, the commands, second trace calc, number five, intersection. So just for just for notes, you guys don't need to write this down. So the answer is going to be 0 0.500, comma, 1.000 if you want to emphasize that you are intending to give three decimal accuracy. But I mean, this would be OK. It just doesn't communicate it as well. Um, okay, so find the equation of the tangent line to the graph at x equals 1 half. Well, that's this right here, the tangent line to gx specifically. So we could kind of sketch it in roughly. That's the tangent line. Okay, and so there's two ways we could do this. We could, one, we already have a point, right? And you need a slope. So we could Use your graphing calculator, second calculate number six, dy dx is the derivative, and we want it of the g function, which is this one, and we type in, we want it at 0.5, and it tells us what it is. It says, okay, dy dx equals 6.000008. Now, I think probably it's specifically supposed to be six. So if we did this by hand, which is something I've, I'm not expecting you to do yet, but the derivative of a power uh, exponential, you multiply the power in front and decrease it by one. So that's the derivative. And then you could plug one half into it. 
and uh, that's going to be 24 times 1 fourth, which is exactly 6. So it's actually supposed to be exactly 6. Our calculators don't do this. Our calculators, what they do is they take a point, uh, point zero zero, point zero 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 one away from it on either side, and then they calculate those points on the curve and they connect it with a we call a secant line, and they that's a rough estimate for getting the derivative. That's how your calculator does it. That's why it's not perfect. Um, so then we could write the equation line. We could say y minus 1 equals 6.000x minus 1. Now, I think it would be appropriate to write the three zeros because it wasn't exactly 6 according to your calculator. But this is a fine answer. Point slope form. Who cares? Now, you could change the slope intercept if you want, but whatever. I mean, you could do um, – I feel like I made a mistake. Uh, the x coordinate is supposed to be 1, right? So um, that's another equation of it. But the other trick I showed you guys before is from the draw menu, second program draw, number 5, tangent line. Now you got to make sure you're on the function that you want the tangent line of because there's two different functions. If you go up or down, it changes it. So then I'm going to type in the location of it. And so it's going to be, there it goes, it draws it in, and at least it looks right, and it gives you y equals 6.000008x plus negative 2.000004. Now if we wrote it in three decimal accuracy, it would be that so it's up to you anyways i mean I, that's fast so if you need an equation of tangent line that's a nice way to do it um second uh it was under program which gives you to the draw menu and then you pick option five tangent and then you type in the x location you want and enter and then it draws it and it gives you the formula for it at the bottom now the only drawback to this sometimes is if the slope is a lot of digits then the y-intercept kind of gets cut off and i personally don't know how to access that it just cuts it off and it's on the screen so you might not it might kind of give you not you know not you might not be able to see three decimals of the uh, y-intercept anyways that's what you do you could also do derivatives from the home screen math uh, 8. Okay, find the area of region R. So the area of region R is the area between these two curves. So our strategy is going to be to find the area under the sine curve first, and then find the area under the cubic curve, and subtract them to get the area that's in between. Right? So I think it's not a bad idea to just kind of write that down. Like, that's my thought. Now, I need the setup. So the setup for the first one is 0 to 0 0.5 of the sine curve f of x. And you can just write f of x if you want, or you could write sine pi x. But you should write the dx. you got to write the limits. Minus 0 to 0.5, because we already found that intersection of the gx curve, which is the cubic. Now, if you do these, if you accidentally do these backwards, it should be obvious because you're gonna get a negative area, which doesn't make sense, right? So that's my strategy, that's my setup. Now you could do these on this home screen here, but you have to do one at a time. You say, all right, so I can count number seven. Now it's gonna do, you gotta, tell it which function to do, 0 to 0.5, and it shades it in, and it gives you the answer is 0 0.318309. Now, before you're done, carry more than three decimals, and then you can do second calculate number 7, and I want the cubic now, 0 to 0.5, and it's cool because it shades it. The only problem here is that the shading is all underneath out of the shade, so you can't see it. 0.125. And then you go to your home screen and find the answer. Um, 0.318309 minus 0.125.
0 0.193 round or truncated comes out the same. Or the way to do it is to just do it all on the home screen, which I really am a fan of for multiple curves. So I would do math nine, or you could, that's the shortcut. You just hit nine, that's a shortcut. The numbers on the sides of programs are shortcuts. Math nine, we could do vars, y vars function. Now I plugged in the sine curve second, I think. So you gotta remember that comma x, comma zero, comma 0.5, minus math nine, vars, y vars, function y1, comma x, comma 0, comma 0.5. And then, boom, there's the answer. And I have to do them separate, and I have to write them down, and I have to recalculate it later. So that's kind of a nice thing to do, is to, to do integration without doing it on the graph screen. So uh, anyways, these, this is what we call the setup. And I require this on homework. I require it on your tests and on the AP test to get full credit on free response questions. This will be worth like one out of three points. This would be worth two points. If you don't show this and get the right answer, you're only getting one out of three points. If you show this and even get the wrong answer for some reason because you don't know how to use your calculator right or whatever, you'll get two out of three points just for setting it up right. I need to see the setup. I need you guys to start doing that. So that's warm up. Um, you should be doing the uh, pretest uh, for your assignment. And pretest is a lot like the test, has a lot of similar problems, but problems that you've probably seen many, many, many times. Uh, you know, sometimes I might throw something in there kind of fun, but uh, usually it's stuff we've done a lot of. Okay. So try the pretest, and I'll be, we'll go over that in a future video.